Hi everyone, I'm Whitney and I post a new tutorial every week to help sewers of all skill levels learn new projects and techniques. This week I'm sharing part two of a matching bag set. Last week I showed how to make a zipper bag that was bound on the inside with bias binding to hide all of those raw edges. And then this week I'm showing how to make a tote bag with a zippered top. I actually get requests for this type of project all the time and now that I know how to make it, I want to make a thousand different variations on it. So let, hit that like button down below if you want to see other versions of this zippered tote bag. Here are all the pieces that you will need to make this zipper tote bag. As you can see, there are a lot of them. So I've included all of the yardage requirements, cutting details, and much more in a PDF that you can find over on WhitneySews.com in the shop tab. Or if you're a second tier patron or higher over on Patreon, the PDF is already available for you over there. And of course, if you're interested in supporting future Whitney Sews tutorials, definitely check out my Patreon page. Um, that's a great way to show some support as well as earn some fun rewards for yourself. Now onto the tutorial. Once you have your PDF, pick out three coordinating fabrics, pre-wash them, and you are ready to start. Lay all of the zipper side pieces with the pretty side of the fabric facing down and fold each short end over by a half inch and press with an iron. Lay one side piece right sides up, then center the zipper on top also right sides up, and another side piece right sides down. Add a few clips to hold the layers together and sew along the long edge to attach. I use a vintage sewing machine with a presser foot that is a quarter inch wide on one side and an eighth inch wide on the other. So I just run the eighth inch side of the presser foot up against the zipper teeth and it's easy to fill them through the fabric and I get a nice straight seam every time. If you don't have a foot like this, feel free to switch to a zipper foot. They do come with most sewing machines. Open the piece up so all the pretty sides are on the outside and smooth the fabric away from the zipper teeth. Sew a top stitch along the short sides and the zipper edge. Here's how it should look. The only unfinished part is the longest edge farthest from the zipper. Repeat with the other two zipper sides, one right side up, the zipper right sides up on top, and the other piece right sides down. Add clips and sew next to the zipper like before. Open and smooth the fabric away from the zipper, then top stitch the three sides. The zipper top is now complete and should look like this. Grab the zipper end tabs and flip so they are pretty sides down. Turn the short edges in a half inch and press with an iron. Fold each piece in half and sew with a half inch seam allowance on each side. Trim the seam allowance down to reduce bulk as much as possible. Flip both of the pieces right sides out and use a pair of scissors or other pointed tool to poke out the corners. Trim off the end of the zipper just past the little stoppers. Push the ends of the zipper into the open side of the tab. Use a pencil or something else to help if needed. Sew across the open end of the tab to attach. I sewed across mine twice. Repeat on the other end, but leave the large zipper stopper in place. Now onto the straps. With pretty sides facing down, fold the long edges over by a half inch and press with your iron. Then fold the entire piece in half so all the pretty sides are on the outside and sew a top stitch along both long edges. Do this for both so you have two straps. Grab one of your bag bottom pieces and lay it right sides up. Position the strap as shown so it is six inches away from each outer edge with the short edges lined up with the top. 
Clip the strap in place, then repeat with the second strap and remaining bag bottom piece. By the way, if you haven't tried out craft clips yet, you are definitely missing out. I have an Amazon affiliate link below where you can find the craft clips I'm using and I love them. Sew along all four strap ends to attach. Lay the bag upper on the bag bottom right sides together, matching up the top and sides. Sew along the long edge with a half inch seam allowance. Open the piece up and flip over. Press the seam down toward the bottom of the bag. Lay a piece of fusible fleece on top so the textured side is against the back side of the fabric. Fuse them together following the directions on the fusible fleece. Do this for both pieces. Lay the two bag outers right sides together lining up all the sides. Add plenty of craft clips and sew the sides and bottom with a half inch seam. Position the corner of the bag so it forms a triangle with the seams going down to the point. Make sure the seam allowances are going in opposite directions so they can sort of nest together when lined up. Grab a clear ruler and position it so the point underneath takes up four inches across. This will mean the box at the bottom of your bag will be four inches wide. Use a pencil or whatever marking tool you like to mark a line along the edge of the ruler. Add some clips and sew directly on the marked line. Flip the entire piece so the pretty sides are on the outside. I'm leaving the extra material at the corners to give the bag a little more structure at the bottom. It should look like a bag at this point, but there's no lining yet. So for the lining, lay the two pieces right sides together, matching up all the raw edges. Sew down the side, along the bottom, and along the other side to attach. Then you're going to box both corners of the lining the same way the outer was done. Forming the point and making sure the seam allowances are going in opposite directions, marking a line across that is four inches wide, add clips, and sew directly on that marked line. This time, go ahead and cut off the excess at the corners, still leaving a half inch of seam allowance. Place the bag lining inside the outer so the wrong sides are together. Match up the side seams and top edge and add several clips to hold everything together. You can go ahead and top stitch around the upper edge with a very small seam allowance if you want. I didn't do that. Grab your zipper unit and center it in the top of the bag and clip along the top edge. The zipper should be right sides up and all the raw edges lined up with the raw edges of the top of the bag. Make sure the straps are out of the way and sew a top stitch around the top edge using a small seam allowance. At this point, the entire bag is sewn together and everything is nicely finished except for the raw edges around the top. We're going to use a bias tape or bias binding to finish off the top edge of the bag. I chose a more narrow bias tape that was already pre-made, but you can definitely use a wider bias tape or you can even make your own. And I do have a tutorial showing exactly how to do that that I will link in the video description. Open the seam binding all the way up and line it up with the top edge. Fold the short side over about a half inch, then start sewing. Use the fold line that is pre-pressed in the bias tape as a guide for where to sew and make sure your ends overlap. Trim down the raw edges at the top if needed and wrap the bias tape around to the other side. Make sure the long edge is folded under and top stitch along the fold to attach. This bag and the zipper pouch that I showed how to make last week turned out exactly how I wanted them and they are perfect for the tinker type toys that I bought for my daughter Skylar recently at a thrift store. She loves working with her hands and building things and I love that she can do that but since I have made custom bags like this one for her she also knows exactly where they need to be when it's time to put them away and she can do that independently which is always awesome 
and that's why I've created so many um, bags and fabric bins and things like that for my kids is so they can be responsible for putting their own things away and there is a home for everything that they have. Um, let me know if you are interested in more organizing DIYs and bags and things like that to help you and your kids and your home stay organized because I would love to do more projects like that. Um, the zipper bag that I showed how to make last week is linked right over here to the side in case you haven't seen it already. And until next time, happy sewing.